That's right, all you mentees, it is time for your weekly dosage of an advanced look at all these collected editions coming out from Marvel this week. So, stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks of Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these collected editions. All of these books are due out in the direct market on April 21st, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. So, We've got a mix of everything in here, a couple of complete collections, epic collections, and some new trades, as well as the anthology series of Dawn of X. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to kick it off with Captain Marvel Volume 5. Captain Marvel Volume 5, The New World. Moving on to Volume 5 of Kelly Thompson's run on Captain Marvel. This book retails for $15.99, and you're probably asking yourself, who are these characters in the background? You recognize these characters in the foreground. Well, I'll explain a little bit about why this is called The New World, and why I'm curious to see what's going to happen to Ove back there. So, here we have issues 22 through 26 of a series that started in 2019 and it's carol and her friends investigating this crash and she is well let's just say she is somehow not gonna say how exactly transported into another world and by this other world i mean the future and i'm always a sucker for stories like days of future past days of future present days of futures yet to come forever yesterday whatever alternate reality future it is i've always been a sucker for just to see how the characters themselves that are time displaced react to the current events or what's happening at the time and then how they manage to come back to our time and this is no different i really enjoyed this so in the future and i think this is in the year 2052 see i don't like that though i don't like when they date themselves and start uh, talking about years because that really puts a damper on the story because later on when it's the year 2052 you're gonna be like wait a minute this is what's supposed to take place during this time what happened anyway i know i can't be the only one right it is the year 2005 right or back to the future 2015 man we're a little off from flying cars so anyway back to this yes it's a possible future where carol sees herself and there's a new band of heroes and most of them are related to some of the characters that she's known including jessica drew thor and it is a really fun storyline i really enjoy this this is probably my favorite story uh, from kelly thompson's run on captain marvel and we're introduced to new characters you don't know who to trust exactly and her bond with some of her old friends are still there because some of them are still alive in this future and how she manages to get there and whether she manages to get back to her, her regular time i'll let you find out for yourself but yeah i really enjoyed this particular story jorge molina's man those covers are gorgeous but yes there's ove who probably may or may not be related to namor and like I said, you can find out all of that for yourself. Yeah, 2052. That's when this all takes place. Now, uh, the book is, like I mentioned, $15.99 and has 112 pages. Let's look in the back for some extras. So we've got some of the variant covers back here. It's a gorgeous Russell Dodderman cover. And then we have a King in Black cover by Trad Moore. Black Widow by Kelly Thompson. This is called The Ties That Bind, and so happy to see that here, a volume one. Here's what the back looks like. The covers are supplied by Adam Hughes. This one retails for $15.99 and collects the first five issues, hell yes, of the 2020 Black Widow series. And I say hell yes because, damn, I love this book. This is probably my favorite read so far that I've had, um, I would say almost this year and this will probably make it in my top 10 reads of 2020 so it is all written by kelly thompson elena casagrande does the artwork there's a couple of flashback um art in maybe it's an issue five with rafael de la torre jory Belair does the color artwork i'm sorry it's carlos uh, gomez and federico Bli are the ones that do the flashback art rafael de la torre helps out with issue five so 
without going into spoilers or too many spoilers when I do this, I do have to talk about the premise of this book. And it's Natasha Romanoff coming back home one day after a mission that her and Captain America were working on. And I'm just showing this freaking phenomenal artwork by Casa Grande. So she meets Captain America on a rooftop, as you do. And she has this little Batman trick here that she does that I wasn't aware that she did. And she pretty much disappears on Captain America. But when she gets back home, she is tranquilized, falls out a window, and then goes missing for three months. Nobody knows where she is. Her friends are looking for her. Uh, and then we see three months later that this lady named Natalie is an architect and a very popular architect. She is engaged. And the most important part about her life is that she has a child. So, yeah, Clint Barton's watching TV one day and he's like, Whoa, there's Natasha. So he gets with Jimmy, James, Bucky, and says, Hey, we found her. We got to go get her. The other thing I was going to say about her life is that she's also happy. For the first time, Natasha Romanoff is happy living a normal life. So she's engaged to a man named James. She has a cat named Logan, and her son's name is Stevie. So it seems like all of, gosh, see what I mean? Gorgeous artwork. So it seems like all her new life has parts of her past and mixed with this new life. So there's a big mystery as to what's going on and who is behind all of this and whether she wakes up or not. The variant covers are sometimes on the opposite page of the standard edition covers. So I'm just going to leave it at that. That's really what I wanted to talk about was just the premise, but mainly showcases beautiful artwork. And it reminds me of the Wade and Samney run, but honestly, I think I like Casa Grande's artwork a little more. I'm just going to show a couple more pages because I'm going to show you how she handles the action sequences, which you probably saw a little bit at the beginning. Uh, and this isn't the best one, but there's other ones in here. I just like how easy it is to follow the characters and... I love the close-ups of exactly what Natasha is doing. Now, whether she remembers her past or if these are just muscle memories, you can find all of that out for yourself. Damn, this book was awesome, and I hope everyone checks it out. Kelly Thompson killed it on this. Now, let's look in the back. I don't know if there's any extras in the back. All right, there's no extras in the back. The book has 112 pages. I just wanted to showcase this phenomenal artwork again. Just look at the way that she lays out her frames. It's beautiful. Oh, so badass, so deadly. This book, seriously, was my favorite read this year so far. Um, cannot recommend it high enough, and that is Black Widow, The Ties That Bind. Next up is Dawn of X, Volume 15. And what I always like to do, just because none of the solicitation pages are ever right, here are the books that are collected within this particular collection. We have X-Factor 3, Wolverine 5, New Mutants number 12, Marauders 11 and 12, and then Giant Size X-Men number 1. So let's go ahead and get this opened. Kill Shaw. What does that mean? I've got to be careful uh, flipping through here because we're getting to the end of the Dawn of X era. Here are all your creators, your writers up at the top, artists, color artists, letters, cover art. I like that they're putting the artists together. So the pencilers and the inkers are all together. Kicking it off with X Factor here. Again, following the mystery of who killed Aurora and what exactly is going on. This is drawn by David Baldeon and Leah Williams who is writing one of my favorite interpretations of Polaris in a long time. So much so that as much as I am excited to see Polaris join the X-Men again, I also hate to see her leave because I really enjoy her in this type of story. Now, don't want to spoil exactly what's happening here, so let's keep moving. This is uh, Victor Bogdanovic continuing the vampire story here. And... Every time I look at his artwork, I always compare him to Greg Capullo, and I will stop doing that because I'm sure he gets tired of that too, right? But he's starting to evolve into his own art style, and I'm excited to see where he goes. It is really gorgeous. This particular story, though, it is kind of um, a little more mature than the rest of them because this has decapitation, has a bunch of limbs being torn. So just a heads up. And then we move over to 
New Mutants. This story is really cool because I like to see the mix of New Mutants and Generation X, and then you also have a lot of the students from Morrison's run on New X-Men, like my boy there, Glob. And this one's sweet. There's a nice little bonding moment between Magic and Glob later on. I had to skip a lot of parts here in Excalibur, and honestly, I have to skip this last part too. But things are about to wrap up for the Dawn of X era. All of this ends with Volume 16, so this is the penultimate volume. And then we read the X of Swords, or, or Ten of Swords. And then we get into the Reign of X era. By the way, the Phantom X giant size here, freaking phenomenal. Like, one of the best Phantom X stories. We'll see in the back. So we've got some extras back here. A couple of variant covers. This one is by Viktor Bogdanovic. Looks painted. Uh, the heroes at home. The book has 172 pages. Retails for $17.99. For all you spine watchers, here's what all the spines look like together. You can hit pause, hit like, hit subscribe. Whatever you want to do here. Let's keep going. The Man Thing by Steve Gerber. The Complete Collection, Volume 3. A book that surprised me and Curtis when we got to announce it, that Marvel was actually going to wrap it up. This book retails for $44.99. And this is everything that Steve Gerber did with his character of Man-Thing. And I know he did not create the character of Man-Thing, but when I think of Man-Thing, and I'm sure a lot of people do this, we think of Steve Gerber. Because he redefined the character. So here are all the stories that are collected within this particular collection here. Then you also have all the people that worked on it. You have Jim Mooney's artwork in the original Man-Thing run. Um, Kevin Nolan, oh, and it is so gorgeous uh, looking at his artwork. You've got Tom Sutton in the Marvel Comics Presents. So this wraps up the Man-Thing run with Steve Gerber. So this collects issues 19 through 22. Iron Man number 3, Howard the Duck number 22 and 23. It has a little bit of 24, which is the aftermath of that Star Wars parody uh, issue. Uh, it has material from Rampaging Hulk number 7, so it's the black and white artwork. I think that one's drawn by Jim Starlin. Web of Spider-Man Annual number 4. I'm pretty sure that one's with the slug. And then Marvel Comics presents 1 through 12. Of course, that being the anthology, and it collects just the 8-page Man-Thing issues. But... The most important thing to get out of this is the final Steve Gerber story for Man-Thing. And that happens in the pages of the Infernal Man-Thing 1, 2, and 3. Uh, which is what this cover comes from. This is the Arthur Adams beautiful cover. And we'll talk probably more about that than uh, the rest of this collection. Don't get me wrong, the rest of this collection is awesome. Especially the differences of Man-Thing back here and Man-Thing later on when Steve Gerber came back to the book. So here's the, yeah, here's the Jim Starlin pages from the Rampaging Hulk. The Howard the Duck stories. The, this is all Gene Colan, if I'm not mistaken, during this era. Yeah, the Star Wars parody. The Star. Wow. And then appearances throughout the Marvel Universe that were written only by Steve Gerber. You know, because eventually, the, it's weird, but he did join the Thunderbolts for a while. Um, he was in a couple of issues of, of Uncanny X-Men. But this is just focusing on the Steve Gerber run. So the Marvel Comics presents the way that they actually collect every cover is if it features the Man-Thing. For example, this is Marvel Comics presents number one by Walter Simonson, the cover. But I guess because of the grass area here and it's all connected, you get the entire double page spread. And that's not the only time. You get one here too by Big John Buscema. But most of the time, it just collects wherever uh, cover the man thing is featured in, whether it's in the back cover, sometimes the front cover. But this is the Sutton artwork, and it is gorgeous. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Bernie Wrightson. But let's get to this. So here we have Steve Gerber's final man thing story. This pub was published after he passed away. So this is the screenplay of The Living Dead Man. Kevin Nolan supplying the painted artwork. So this took a few years to make. This is the follow-up to the song cry of The Living Dead Man that was origi originally published in the Man-Thing comics. So this is the follow-up. And it brings us back to the character of Brian Lazarus, who is the protagonist from the original story, 
and he's returned as a middle-aged man. A lot of his life has changed. And I will be honest with you, rereading this now that I'm in my 40s, it's a completely different type of take that I have on it. So I read this uh, when it was published. I think it was originally published with uh, the original Song Cry of the Living Dead Man, like in a collection, like a small trade paperback. And I've always been a big fan of uh, Steve Gerber's run on Man Thing. I'm so glad it's getting a reprint. And Kevin Nolan's artwork. But and to see it painted, it's just freaking gorgeous. But as I was saying, this takes a whole new different meaning reading it in my 40s. Because it is more of a middle-aged man storyline here that's happening. The uh, We've had him age in real time from when he first appeared. So yeah, this story resonates more with me this time around. Because Brian is older. And he's devoted his entire life just pursuing a creative career that has guaranteed him money. He stopped following his dreams. And now he feels empty. His marriage is empty. It, it's just... Damn, Steve Gerber. And there's a beautiful dedication to Steve Gerber. Um, I believe it was Ralph Macchio, if I'm not mistaken, that wrote it. That just really hit me hard. So all the way back here with the extras, like Lazarus Rising from the Swamp, Ralph Macchio's introduction to the Infernal Man thing, number one, is all collected back here. This last line, man, that one, that one hit me. Uh, this is for you, Steve. Wherever you are in your journey through eternity, I hope you enjoy the fruits of your decades ago labors. We miss you and are much the poorer for your loss. Whew. All right, uh, let's look at the extras here. I'm going to keep a few surprises, like the variant for the Infernal Man thing, for you all to see when you, whenever you get the book. But here are some pinups and covers, unused covers. It's a beautiful pinup there. Bob Layton. And we just uh, went over that, but the process of the artwork here from thumbnail to painted. Man. He painted every page. Some of it looks cartoony and crazy. <laughs> it's it's something, man. I'll that's that story. That ending. And then I think this is from the official yeah, official handbook of the Marvel Universe. Now, one of the questions I'm sure you're probably gonna ask is if you bought the omnibus or if you're planning on getting the omnibus, do you need this? Well, the only issues that are in here that are collected in the omnibus are the very first issues, and that's the man thing, 19 through 22. Everything else is new and written by Steve Gerber. And I strongly suggest if you have an interest in man thing, or if you really enjoyed the omnibus to pick this up because these stories are not collected in the omnibus. I really hope they make a follow-up omnibus or a follow-up oversized hardcover just to get those uh, Kevin Nolan pages in there in oversized format, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. The book, by the way, again, $44.99, has 408 pages. Next up, Joe Kelly, The Complete Collection, Volume 2 of his run on Deadpool. It's been over a year since Volume 1 came out. This book retails for $39.99 and has 386 pages. Now, let's go ahead and get this opened. Deadpool by Joe Kelly, the complete collection. There's volume one, and here are all your creators behind this particular run. And the main artists on this are Pete Woods and then Walter McDaniel. Not to be confused with Scott McDaniel. Their artwork are very different. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walter McDaniel does not use that many shadows, but uh, it kicks off with Pete Woods' artwork, and his art is very cartoony probably trying to mimic a little bit of what Ed McGinnis was doing on this particular book but we show here we have Wade Wilson fighting off against T-Ray we have the return of Siren reunited with her we have a storyline with Typhoid Mary wrapping up uh, we have the return of Zoe Culloden and her partner Noah from the oh what were they the uh Lando Landau that's it Landau Lake Man and Luck agency which first appeared in the pages of Larry Hammas' Wolverine, and they're kind of an, um, how do I put it? An agency from the future, from an alternate timeline, from an alternate reality, that are trying to set time right. Maybe. And <laughs> I really enjoyed 
this aspect of it, why they show up here, because they believe Deadpool to be, well, I'll just say something special. Then, probably the most important thing that comes out of this whole run, for people that have seen the movie, is the introduction of the character known as Ajax. Now, Ajax in this is a little bit different than the Ajax that you see in the movie. Francis, for those of those and first name basis with the guy. Um, this collects Deadpool 0, 12 through 20, uh, the annual from 1998, and that's the Deadpool and Death annual, and the baby's first Deadpool book number one, and the Encyclopedia Deadpoolica number one. So this, yeah, this has the death issue here, the annual, which in starts off the whole fascination with the character of death and <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous but you know it's joe kelly so the other important issue here let me see if i can find it. it's the wizard issue i believe yeah back here deadpool number zero this is a fight and a little bit of a team up with the lamest dead characters in the marvel universe as of this issue some of them may or may not be back from the dead just saying it's night of the living dorks an army of resurrected rejects that's pretty much what this is you have people like the wizard in there and a couple i'm sure that you recognize <laughs> yes <laughs> he runs into uncle ben and aunt may um yeah quite funny but yeah this is the, what a lot of people you know think is the epitome of a deadpool run that's what the joe kelly era was there oh here's the encyclopedia so this tells you you know where deadpool first appeared how he changed but this is the era when he first started uh breaking the fourth wall so the encyclopedia back here catches you up on the character of wade wilson and the things that he was doing and has been doing so yes the annual 1998 right there that we just talked about the fight with ajax and there's also his supporting cast like Al and Weasel that are completely ridiculous and are featured. Well, no, I don't think you can feature. No. Yes. Weasel. You can. Sorry. I was thinking of uh, Bob, the Hydra agent in the back here for the extras. You have the wizard poster back here from wizard magazine, the trade paperback cover, or no, this is the omnibus cover. And then some original artwork, some interviews, As I mentioned, $39.99, 386 pages. This is the Marvel X-Men Premiere 1997 Timelines trading cards, which I didn't even know were a thing. I was out of trading cards and comics by then. And yeah, here are all the covers without the title. And original artwork here without the uh, colors. Last but not least is the X-Factor Angel of Death Epic Collection. This is X-Factor Epic Collection Volume 3. So we've had a Volume 1, uh, Volume 7 and 8, I think. And now we have a Volume 3. So I assume Volume 2 will collect the Mutant Massacre era. But this collects the Fall of the Mutants era. So, oh man. To talk about this one, I have to talk a little bit about a spoiler. So this is during the time when X-Factor was doing some undercover stuff, pretending to be human beings going after mutants, but really pretending to be human beings to recruit mutants that are out there. Caliban joined their forces. He was one of the Morlocks, especially during the uh, Mutant Massacre. You have Artie and Leech now living with them. Um, you've got Rusty and Skids. You've got... Boom Boom eventually joins the team, and then Richter joins the team. But you have the original five X-Men, Jean Grey, Scott Summers, Hank McCoy, Bobby Drake, and Warren Worthington on the team. So, the spoiler part, just a little bit of one, is that during this era, uh, the team that was helped being uh, funded by Cameron Hodge is eventually betrayed by him. So he is part of this movement known as the right. And then we have Apocalypse Return. And Apocalypse comes back, tells a little more about his origin. So he's no longer a dude sitting behind a desk running business deals. He's talked about how long he's been a mutant, how many 
centuries he's been a mutant so you get a little bit of an understanding that this guy is not a normal mutant he's been around for a long time the other thing that he's been doing through the backup pages is he has been recruiting mutants whether they were through the mutant massacre or whether a mutant like abraham that he was in uh, iron lung for a long time and he's been promising them power so one of those mutants and you can find out for yourself uh, what happens was a member of the team and through the mutant massacre something happens and then something horrible happened in issue number 15 so here are his four horsemen you have famine war pestilence and of course last but not least is the final horseman and he is known as death and to everybody's surprise except everyone reading the book when he takes his helmet off, it's revealed that it's Warren Worthington, and all his friends start freaking out. They're like, Warren, what happened? You can find out for yourself how this story wraps up, and what happens to Warren. Uh, I was going to say, the other thing I'm glad they collected in here is the issue of Power Pack 35, because that's such an important issue. So much so that something big happens to one of the characters of the Horsemen, because when they're fighting an X-Factor, one of the Horsemen goes missing, and you're like, wait, what happened to her, like, what? So I'm glad that this is included in here. So, speaking of being included, this collects X-Factor 21 through 36, so the beginning of the Inferno saga, as well as Annual Number 3, which is part of the Evolutionary War, and then Power Pack 35. So all of that is collected in here. So in issue 26, we have the introduction of the new costumes. So they all get new costumes. And like I said, you can find out if Warren comes back to the side of the Angels... Ha! Um, one other important thing that happens here is the introduction of a character known as Infectia. And she is... How do I put it? Um, she plays a big role in the way that Hank McCoy looks later on. So I'm sure some of you are wondering, like, when did he go from human to beast again? Well, you can find out through these pages. There's another big betrayal from Cameron Hodge. This one is personal, though, for Warren. And then you have the introduction of Nanny and Orphan Maker. Hell yes, who play a big part in Hellions these days. And then the very first part, and it's going to be interesting to see how this is collected, of Inferno. Um, I'm sure it's just going to collect just the X-Men issues as well as the Exterminators. But that might be it if the, when, whenever the next X-Factor epic comes out. But by this point, Louise Simonson is the main writer on the book. Um, you have Walter Simonson, who's co-plotting sometimes but being the main artist on the book. This particular book retails for $39.99 and has 488 pages. Let's get to the back for some extras. So here's a page from the Fred Hembeck show to plug the series. And then the Marvel Age Annual Number 3, little pin up there. And you have the index to X-Men. This is number 12. It's showing them as they first looked in the original X-Men series. And then, as they look now in the X Factor series, or then, a hey, mimic. I always love that house ad by Joan Bogdanove. Here's some oh character designs here from Walter Simonson. And then this is X Men pinup by John Byrne. I love the connecting covers. Didn't even realize them when I was getting them as a kid, but pretty much what connects them is ship in the background. Yeah, right here it is with the new colors for the trade paperback, the Essential X Factor trade paperback. That's right, there's a little, um, what's it called, a uh, fill-in issue by Tom DeFalco. But this is for the Inferno prologue, the back cover. But that, as they say, is that. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. 
And that was the content and page count of these collected editions coming out this week. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. If you have any more questions, leave those comments down below. Let me know which of these books you're excited about. If you're collecting Man-Thing and Complete Collections and surprised that we actually have a Volume 3 now. If you're going to continue getting the Deadpool Joe Kelly Complete Collections. And seriously, everybody should be reading Black Widow. It was freaking phenomenal. And let me know if this is the way you're collecting the Dawn of X era. And finally, we get another X Factor epic collection. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to check out our spread shop and our Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love. <laughs>